I'd like to, I'd like to beforehand. Okay, here goes. Please find below the outline of the complaint. All, all right, I'll just go through each point and then I'll ask you what you're going to do about it and that way, that way we can get it done quickly. Okay. Okay, so I'm going through a complaint from Joanne Morton, or more M-O-R-T-O-N, at Look Ahead Housing, sent to Emma, E-M-M-A, Lucas, on my behalf. A complaint that I made and instructed her to do, and my name is Ronan, R-O-N-A-N, Blaney, B-L-A-N-E-Y. And the complaint is it's a very simple complaint, it's in five points. The first point is, Mr Blaney explained he was served notice at the same time that he received a re-diagnosis. Mr Blaney explained that his former diagnosis of schizophrenia has been assessed and that his re-diagnosis of Asperger's led to a notice being served. Now that is a very serious accusation. What do you do, intend to do to look at that? Okay. What about it on the notice huh? served and yeah. the notice that uh, Notice that, man. What made you think that you're you're here to clarify it? What made me think there was a re-diagnosis? The actual eleventh, I got re-diagnosed, yeah. and I got a letter from the Maudsley Hospital on the um, hold on here on on the twenty-first of July. Now, that wasn't taken to be the full report. Mm. The full report from the Maudsley came out, I have it here, on uh, 30th of November 2012 and it was sent out by post and it arrived on Tuesday around the 5th. And when did they do the When the actual notice of eviction came about, it was handed to me on the 5th, the same day the Maudsley officially gave me a 20 page report. Uh, yes, June the 11th. June. Yeah, June the 11th. Yeah, it's just to help me the chronology. And you received the letter on 30th of November. I received the letter on in, in the, at the end of July, but I actually received the Maudsley report, the full report, that's 20 pages in length. I received this, as you can see, it's written here, on the 30th of November. Yeah, yeah, uh -huh. I can see that, the 30th of November, but the first letter was on February. On, uh, at the end of July. On, on the same day, I also got dropped as a WLMHT patient and I got a notice of eviction. It was all done very quickly on the same day and I don't believe in coincidence, coincidences that are this big. One at the same time possible. Three things at the same time on the same day. Although probable, highly unprobable and highly unlikely. And I believe this should be looked into. Okay. Okay. What would you like to be done on this? Notice. Um, only a notice is just to enforce it is a long process that would ought to do it. There is no plan to do it. Me. Yeah. So, okay. The notice is worrying you and the timing of it timing of it, yeah. I can I can suspend it if that's a big worry. Okay. There, there are several possible reasons for the notice being given out. The number one is that the wrongdoing up to this point in time was so wrong they just wanted to sweep it under the carpet and get me out quickly. But the alternative that's less serious, which is they just wanted to help me and engage with the service, I have in writing a letter from Look Ahead Housing on the 14th of January 2013 and it says here the reason behind the notice was to prompt you to engage with the service. The reason why a notice to evict was to make me deal with them, when legally I don't have to deal with them. The reason behind such a heavy legal action was to he heavily encourage me to do something. Now this, in my mind, is a threat. A threat to engage in a care service that I do not want to engage with, that I have to volunteer for, and as such, threatening someone to eviction for lack of engaging with a care service is a lack of voluntary agreement. And to me this threat is very serious, and that's the lesser reason behind them giving me the notice of eviction. Now, it's, the lesser reason isn't itself very serious. Yeah. Um, Ronan, 
you have a tenancy agreement. Tenancy agreement. All residents. Okay, we're well, 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 I believe we've looked at this, and he knows what the full details are. And he doesn't. I'm only here to help him clarify the investigation and how to find information. And I've shown him the information. It's on file. At look ahead, and he, he can look. He can find it. So we can go on now to, to point number two. Yeah. Can I just before we pass to number two? Put into the community, into unsupported housing. I was moved into Look Ahead under very high priority on the PAT application. They did not tell me about it. The PAT application expired within a year. I should have been moved out in a few weeks. I wasn't. They kept hurrying me into a care plan that I wouldn't agree to. And I was told before coming in by Ken Little, social worker, that they wouldn't go near me or put me into care and that I'd be out in a few weeks. And living in a flat independently in the community, local to where I live, my Asperger's symptom, that's important, the routine, and where I lived, local to where I lived, would not be a place unsuitable for someone as delicate as me, as a council block like they put wood before, it would just be an ordinary, good quality piece of housing in the community, in other words, a two up, two down, around Brackenbury Village, or around uh, off Hammersmith Road or something, where it's just a, just a, a dwelling like any other dwelling, probably under the um, organisation or whatever you call it, of housing association. Okay. So basically, what you would like is that you know, I think we'll come back to this. One other point you have. To I, I have to clarify this here. What I said was move into the community unsupported independent. Supported basically means that there are strings attached mm. and I'm under care that I haven't volunteered for. It's a, a almost a roundabout way of me agreeing that a condition of me leaving to live independently in the community that I do then care, which is a contradiction in terms. I want to live unsupported, independent in the community and I want to live in a, a dwelling similar to a private dwelling. I was told when I moved in here I would not be in a two up, two down and I was in very high priority when I was moved in here. But that path application, they did not tell me about it and it, it closed and they let it close without telling me about it. And if they acted on, on the conditions I moved in here, I'd have been out in a couple of weeks or a month and there would be no way in this because I was under such high priority because it was a police that moved me in here quickly for my own safety. You know, so we moved out quickly for my own safety that the priority alone meant a lack of a waiting list and a, a, a lack of how are they going to assess me. I was on very high priority under that PATH application and they allowed it to expire to my detriment. Okay, thank you for that and um, noted that about moving into community and... No, 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 it's okay. You know, I have made appointments so I have all the time for you, don't worry. Point number two, Mr Blaney is unhappy about measures taken in regard to the repair of his cooker. He received a letter stating that the repairs can only be made if his cooker is cleaned. Mr Blaney believes that he is required to submit to ongoing monitoring of the cleanliness of his cooker and he feels that this... I understand um, you suppose it is so dark on it. What I can help with Oh, okay, let me stop you there, yeah. please. Uh, note on this particular point, my community support worker at the time at WLMHT, Nicola Wakeham, examined my cooker after they said it was dirty and at the time, and she found it to be completely clean. John Hunt phoned up WLMHT and was making odd comments about the cleanliness of my cooker and having people come in each night to, serve, to support me in the cleaning of my cooker and stand around my flat. Now, the cooker was clean. She verified that what was said about it being unclean was untrue and she also noted and put in my file with WLMHT and brought to their communication the oddness of John Hunt's phone call. Can, can, can I offer you something? I was offered mosaic and CRT to help me clean my flat in the past and they did not say the engineer would come in once and clean it. They wanted ongoing support which was mosaic or CRT. Now I've had bad experiences with them in the past and that's why I did not want them coming in each night. Okay. Um, what I can offer you is the one off uh, help you to cook it so that the engineer my, I am not mentally ill, I've been undiagnosed, I've cleaned my cooker. Now, um, I do not want anyone coming in cleaning my cooker, and if there's conditions attached to my cooker being repaired, I'd rather the repair not to go ahead. Okay, that's, that's it. So, that's, that's number two. We're going Mr. Blaney believes that a court...
transcript is not a true reflection of events. I was not able to determine if look-ahead staff gave statements or whether it was the evidence of CMHT. This means that while I was in a psychiatric hospital, written evidence was submitted about my misbehaviour. I did not have access to that written evidence and I'd like to know if look-ahead contributed to that written evidence. Um, I'd like to know if it was the evidence of CMHT and I would like to know, I can't do too much on this because it's too much in-house so I would need Joseph here to clarify and tell me what he can do to look into this point. I understand. Joseph here has a problem understanding the point that's in the complaint. He sa from what he says and what he understands it shows that he needs help in understanding. When I, on the 29th of February um, 2012, at a tribunal hearing at Charing Cross Hospital, written evidence was submitted about me in the building misbehaving and in the community misbehaving. Now, what was put down there, what was mentioned, was untrue, and I can't repeat what was mentioned, but that written evidence what if, what Joseph needs to find out about this point, if he obtains this written evidence, it will give him the answer he needs for his investigation. And I will give Joseph now a copy of the court report with the written evidence referred to, so he can seek it out, which will help him fully investigate the report in a way that justifies the complaint. And this is his clarification as to how to get the information. Um, thank you for the verification. Now, not aware of it, but I'm happy to look into that. This is my job as an uh, investigator. Copy of that, I'll be grateful. Yes, I do, and, and I will look for it now, and if I can't find it, remind me at the end of the, of the meeting. Okay, thank hold you. On, on. I will give a copy at the end of the meeting. That's fine, that's fine, thank you. Thank you. Point number three. Um, oh. Oh, yes, number four. Yeah. Uh, the, uh, the cooker was done. Uh, Mr. Blaney believes that Look Ahead were responsible for the double prescribing of his medication. He believes this to be deliberate act taken out for financial gain to Look Ahead. Okay. I may be wrong on that. Yeah. No. Yosef, Yosef Hopton um, does not prescribe. At the same time, I think, Sliver were, I think, uh, raised by, uh, once you became eating, surplus medication, pharmacy, for this problem. Now you are, uh, uh, for clarification for Joseph, because I believe Joseph is a good man, he's just going along what he's told, and what he's been told is inaccurate. I have always self-medicated, and in all the self-medicating, um, the medication I'm on when I'm off section, I do not have to take it if I don't want to legally, but that's nonsense. What's, no, 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 don't, don't put anything down. What I would like to say is the medication that I was supposed to take when I was self-medicating and they knew it, they were taking medication into the building and picking it up on my behalf. And also they were, they were handing medication out to me in the hallway. Now, they were picking up the medication on my behalf from a separate pharmacy to Richford Gate. And I got a copy here in physical evidence. It says 352 Goldhawk Road. It's delivery. They don't collect it. You see, it's, a it's delivered here. Fact, yes. While I, while I already had one from Richard Gate. Now, they knew I was self-medicating and they continued the delivery to here. That is either bad, inefficient administration or, for some other reason, they might, might have thought they were still prescribing it to me on paper. Either way, they were handing out medication to me in the hallway, under camera, for months at a time, and they did it to other people as well. So the idea that they don't hand out medication to us and stand over us when we're taking our medication is not true. Joseph doesn't work after six, so we can say he wasn't there after six when it happened. Clearly, here the evidence says that it is dated uh, 31st January 2000. Normally, uh, they... Let me ask you this. Where would you like... Changed it, and they were uh, wrong. Please do correct me. Yeah. Where 
Would you I do not have a care plan or look ahead. They have no, there is no reason for look ahead to be handing me medication under their care. And for them to say when they're handing me the medication, they're not prescribing it to me or giving it to me. They're, they're giving it to me and they've taken my medication. They, they, they can only do this under a care plan and no care plan was agreed to. When, when asked how Mr Blaney would like these issues to be resolved, he stated that he had no faith in the management team and he would like to be given priority to move out independent accommodation within a month or a short period of time. I'm copying Mr Blaney has agreed so that he is aware of passed on this complaint for him and verified that my recording is an accurate outline of his complaint and I agree it is. So. What do you want to do to move me on? Uh, we, recover, uh, we covered a bit this, and your PAP application form was confirmed. I'm in contact with PAP. But uh, my understanding is your application was submitted to, to PAP. Now, what they had asked was they requested a uh, purpose. He provided them that. Okay, uh, you want me to. You, well, this is about Olympic. You, they, I think they were inviting um, fraud it. Uh, through the actual, because uh, we've got some photos. Oh, Somebody gosh. who actually took part. Of, can I ask you, Ronan, why did your ID? They have that is outside that. the complaint. Okay, I'm now looking for what I said I'd look for earlier. The court report. This, this uh, can, can can we stay on uh, invited then? I will answer this in, a, in 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 due course. Okay, all right. Thank you. I am now handing. Joseph, a copy of the court report for the 29th of uh, February 2012, where written evidence was given, and there's a question as to whether or not Look Ahead provided or, or gave, were included in that written evidence, on which um, I was kept in the hospital, and, uh, and there was an attempt to put a condi uh, uh, and it had an effect on my diagnosis. Now, that written evidence in which they based that decision, I did not have access to that written notice, and I need to know whether or not Look Ahead had input, or that, not, not that notice, that written evidence, I need to know whether or not Look Ahead had input into that written evidence, because the written evidence contained a lie. Dr. Walsh read out that it said in the written evidence that I was doing behaviour that was basically criminal, but I've never been before a court of law on any criminal charges, and I need access to that. In order for John to help him in his investigation, he must obtain this written evidence so he can defend or he can he can he, he can answer the question or the, that I've put, that I've put together on that point in the, the complaint. The point of the complaint is where's the thing about the written evidence? On, po three. on point number three, Mr. Blaney believes that a court transcript is not a true reflection of events. Um, I was not able to determine if Look Ahead staff gave statements or whether it was the evidence of CMHT. Now, at that court hearing, the written evidence on which they based their decision, that, on that written evidence, that has to be accessed so as to find out whether or not Look Ahead gave statements that was included in that written evidence and what the, see, see what the clue to those statements is. Yeah. Um, Ronan, can you show me the... Uh, this is the end of the... Oh yes, one last thing. Okay. I'll give you a copy of this. But happy to look into yes, that. Yes, thank you very much. Yeah. Okay, one, one, one last thing. Um, in the time I was here and under your care when I was categorised as being schizophrenic, how... why did you think I was schizophrenic? How did it come about that in your experience of dealing with me, over time that you believed I was paranoid schizophrenic, especially when I may have been categorised as simply schizophrenic when I came in here. It was in non-CMHT biopath team, that's how it works, that we don't do the assessment ourselves. When we are not qualified to do that because it's the doctors who would... Oh, okay, I believe Joseph has been of help. The last bit is just uh, basically a caveat to the complaint. There's strictly nothing to do with it. And basically, uh, the phone is ringing. But basically what this means is that when I was here, I was re-diagnosed as autistic. Mm. And it's unlikely that I'm the only person at West London Mental Health who's also autistic that's been improperly diagnosed.
Now, I'd like to know what look ahead. It's me. Last bit. We've got to get this done quickly because it's costing me money. I would like to know, since I was wrongly diagnosed with schizophrenia and re-diagnosed as Asperger's, and it's it's un highly unlikely that I'm the only person, in mental health, they look out for this according to guidelines, and the guideline I believe that they're supposed to look out for it under is Royal College Council Report CR136 Autistic Spectrum in Adults. Now, I understand I'm asking a lot, but I'd like to know what you've done under this Royal College report since you do the work of mental health in looking out for um, mental illness, how you incorporate in this into your policy. Now, um, you, um, all the residents we have, or yourself, you have, you have been the client of this. It's not as complex a procedure here. Thank you very much for your information. I would like to give you the report, but this would involve you in my care, and that was not a condition of me moving in. Um, I would, however, like if Ulu could be the person to look out for autism or autistic spectrum disorder, and if she could be first in CR136. Locally in the area, it is recommended in the CR136 council report on autistic spectrum in adults that there is a local champion or an organisation champion. I think that Olu definitely has the skills of subtlety and she also has a postgraduate degree which means she's educated to high standard to take on board the CR136 and I would ask that she gets to read this and is the person who looks out for autistic spectrum in this project and makes any recommendations that Joseph might need. I understand that you want I, to I, 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 I'm very, I'm very happy here and I hope Olu enjoys herself with the CR136 because I know she likes to do something positive and she likes to use the brain that God gave her and she's very highly qualified and she's underused and I'm appreciative of John putting to Olu that she can take on board the CR136 Royal College Council Report. CR Um, just hold that there so I can hear it. Um, it says here, you complained you were, you were served with a notice following your re-diagnosis of Asperger's. Previously, your diagnosis indicated you as having schizophrenia. Um, it says here, you looked into my complaint. And then it says down here, um, as part, the project provides support to those who require support. support to those who you provide it. And then it says here, um, each of us working towards a support plan, uh, the association can take steps to end the tenancy. Now here is what the problem I have is. The support plan is like a care plan, a CPA. And since I've moved in here, I was told I'd be out in a few weeks because I was a vulnerable adult, a victim of crime, and I had a secure tenancy. And if anyone from this building even came into my building, they'd lose my job and I wouldn't have to inter enter into a care plan agreement. Now, I never entered into a care plan agreement, and breaking the terms of a care plan agreement subjects me to eviction. I cannot be subjected to eviction to the terms of a care plan agreement because that agreement isn't there. What have you got to say to that? Ronan, you were referred to us, to us by PATH team, similar to other residents who were referred to us. You were not referred to us only just for a few weeks. We have no record of that. We are aware that you had um, your uh, tenancy in general needs, you had difficulties. Okay, okay. And, I, can uh, see, we, I can see what's yeah. happening is you're, you're dribbling along what you think the facts are and I presented something to you and you've ignored it. I was. I was giving a notice of eviction according to not going along with a support plan. That support plan that keys into the tenancy agreement doesn't apply to me because I never opted for that support plan. That's number one. Number two, let, please let me finish. This is very, very important. Number two, you said according to the PATH application. The PATH application was for a vulnerable adult that was a knifing victim to be moved on quickly. Now, 
The social worker never moved me on. You never moved me on. It was allowed to expire. The path plan I had required no care plan agreement or support plan. I was being in and out very quickly because of my vulnerability um, in being in danger in the previous place I lived in. Not my vulnerability and I need support in my daily living. So you allowed that part application to expire and I didn't even know it existed. Why didn't you tell me it existed and why did you allow it to expire? All referrals here are people who have a support need. Yeah? Yeah. And you were referred to us on that basis. Yeah? Hence we wanted you to engage with the Gold Hawk okay, Rod okay. Okay, we'll end this point here because he's going according to his idea of the type of path client I was and moved in under, and that's different to the actual path application I had. And anyhow, he allowed it to expire. He didn't even tell me about it. Okay, here it goes. Next bit. Um, I want to get this over with quickly. You expressed your unhappiness about measures taken regarding the repair of your cooker, that you received a letter stating that the repair could only be done to your cooker if your cooker was cleaned. And I didn't want ongoing monitoring to support me every day in cleaning my cooker. Now, here's the problem I put to you. Um, you carry out week, weekly health and safety checks, etc. Um, my cooker that you said wasn't clean actually was because my community support worker looked at it she verified it was clean and John gave an odd phone call to look ahead about my cooker being unclean when it was clean this is mental illness looking at a clean cooker saying it's unclean and you're going to send people into my flat each night to help me clean my cooker my cooker was clean it's still clean you can't be coming up with excuses like that not to carry out repairs or attaching some type of support team into my home that say I allowed it and I didn't allow it and some excuse over the cleaning of the cooker. I put to you that my cooker was clean. Ronan, if you read a bit down the letter, what it says is, we are required to do a health and safety check. And I said that uh, we are happy to do the health and safety check jointly, the time and uh, dates which is uh, suitable to you. You know, um, okay, I understand. Yeah, so, you know, we're trying to meet you halfway and how we can do, you know, what we are supposed to do because uh, we are expected to do health and safety checks. Yeah, okay, okay, all right. Here it goes again. There seems to be a unifying theme going through here of him dribbling on about support, support, support attached to me being in here under a path plan. Stop basically. The so-called support would help me coming in each week to do my health and safety collect checks as part of supporting me with the type of client I am. There's two groups here. There is the housing association, look ahead property, and then there's a care group. Now the care group shouldn't come near me, and every time they come near me, it's under the justification of their concern and care and the care plan. Now, two things. Number one, in the absence of the fact that I'm a client to this care group, I come under the terms of the tenancy. I get the same rights as any other tenant. Coming into my home every week to check out my cooker, to check out my fire alarm, doing weekly checks is wrong. By law, the gas gets checked once every two years. I get a receipt for the checking of the gas. Do excuse me. Stop, don't interrupt me. I get a receipt for the checking of the gas once every two years. And by law, they can't come more than that to ensure that's not used as a way of harassing uh, clients by the landlord. Now, you don't get your gas checked every two weeks or every two months. I get it checked every few weeks, even though I've taken the receipt. And by law, as a tenant, you're not supposed to come back for two years. But you get around it by saying, well, I'm not a tenant. I'm a client under a care plan. Your care plan group, I'm a tenant to the property group. You've no, you, the unifying team of coming into my home under a care plan is wrong because I haven't agreed to the care plan. What do you got to say to that? The care plan doesn't exist at best. It's, a, it's a, an ongoing thing. Ronan, this place is supported housing. This is not general needs. You used to live in general needs where it is uh, housing and no support provided. Whereas here, 
is supported housing, support housing. So we do both, yeah? As look ahead, <clears throat> as the landlord, we have responsibility mm -hmm. and as a support provider as well. Yeah. Okay. The only way that, the only way they could get us into a place like this under very high support, high support usually means less liberty. In other words, you're almost putting yourself into a prison when you lose all that liberty. Now, nobody would agree to this voluntarily. So what they do is, once we're in here, they start knocking on our doors, and we have to agree to this. And there's nothing. Well, they can't make us do it. And then all of a sudden, out of the smallest thing, all of a sudden, uh, there's a cosy chat or something. We lose our liberty. We're in the hospital hospital one way or the other to get us in the hospital in the first few months we're here and in order to get out and get our liberty what happens is we have to agree to a care plan to exit now here's the problem when they do a sanity test those sanity tests they always lock us up on lies and what happens is do you hear voices no i don't hear voices are you in a happy place Yes, I'm in a happy place. Then they ask you a trick question at the end of the sanity test. The trick question is, are you agreeable or disagreeable with the care we may provide? All this time they're ratcheting up the stress. A person thinking the test is over is in a state of uncertainty, which is disagreeable. And thinking the test is over, are you going to be a disagreeable with any decision we might make? They think that's, ridic that's ridiculous. And in a state of uncertainty, in that psychological state, they always answer disagreeable. But... We have learned this trick over time, and with my Asperger's, I'm very good at being objective. I said agreeable, I passed the sanity test, I was locked up in a lie. Now, all of this about coming in here on the support plan, and once you're in here, everybody comes in with their eyes open on the support plan is a lie. Because everyone who comes in here, within a short period, gets sectioned under a lie. And then we have to come out with the fourth clamp plan, forced on us. The fact that it's forced on us means there's a lack of agreement, which means those support plans are illegal. And you're, ta you're taking people hostage and are also okay. uh, committing medical assault. Okay. I was re-diagnosed with Asperger's. Okay, Ronan, my understanding from what you're saying is you well, what, you're can, can, what yeah, can, can you can you can you can you can you let I, me I, finish I, first? I don't know what's going on here. Okay, you finish then first. Okay. Okay. Now, what I'm saying is you're interested just in housing and not the support or, as you call it, the care package that has nothing to do with you, say. Then let's do something about your housing, whether to find you another accommodation, we talk and uh, liaise with the, um, with the council to find you. I tried to uh, talk to the gentleman behind me, John, the other day, and he said it ha it's put me in with Habentech. Habentech is disability under a care plan. Now, that string's attached again. It seems to be a care group that's always trying to put you into property and key in a care element whereby it promotes... Th it's, it's all part of the care industry. Now, here's the thing. Um, on leaving this place... I wanted to leave as quickly as I could when I get in. In this place, they're jumping for joy at a chance for us to move on and be independent. That being the case, how do you answer that? My path application, when I first moved in, as a vulnerable adult, not as somebody necessarily with schizophrenia or dangerous, that my path application was allowed to expire and I wasn't told about it. If you wanted to move me on when I was under high priority, you'd have told me about the path application and you would have moved me on. You didn't. You allowed it to expire. Why did you allow it to expire and not tell me about it? There is no expiry for this. There is no expiry. What is important is if you engage with staff, staff will support you with your housing with your move on now okay i understand you don't want the support that's fine then you're interested for the move on independent yes, living that's, that's it. yeah yeah if you let me finish um independent living that's fine then a proper application is done then you engage with staff you provide any that, okay, okay, that's not what happened. We're going around in circles. There was a path application and you didn't move me on. And then when, I, when the path application expired, you were complaining about me not, about, 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 you, you were complaining about me not moving on when I had a chance. And if you really wanted to move me on, you'd want to along with that application. Here, here goes the third point. Um, 
You indicated that you believe that a court transcript is a true reflection of events um, and that you were not able to determine if look-ahead staff gave statements or whether it was the evidence of CMT. Uh, court is, uh, you, that you do not believe court transcripts were a true um, <coughs> reflection of events. What happened basically was, once I was falsely committed under a lie at GP surgery, whereby I passed the sanity test and I said I was agreeable, and then they said I was disagreeable, I can do it really quickly for the benefit of the people around me. What happens is, when you say you're disagreeable and they leave after the sanity test, they immediately have their answer and commit you there and then. The fact that they went away for an hour and had to think about everything I said, and then came back and said I said I was disagreeable, that decision took an hour. If I was actually disagreeable, they wouldn't have come back an hour later and it would have been instant. The reason it took them an hour is because I didn't say I was disagreeable. I was committed under a lie. I had my liberty taken away, I, I was taken hostage and I was medically assaulted and all the rest of it. Now here's the thing about it. Um, once, once I was in there, there was evidence given to... It's a, okay, I'll, I'll stop it here. What's it say here? Uh, when I met you at look ahead, um, you gave me a copy of page of tribunal report. Oh yeah, this is easy. Oh my God, this is ridiculous. Um, staff, I can there. Um, I the report includes staff from look ahead, and no oral. The report at this tribunal includes staff from look ahead, and no oral or written submissions were made by look ahead. I can therefore confirm that Look Ahead staff did not make any oral or written submissions to any tribunal regarding you or in any way connected with you. In other words, no information came to the tribunal about me living here. When I was at the tribunal, it said I was misbehaving here. On the Dr. Jolly complaint, uh, reporting to the complaint I put, he said I was misbehaving here. Um, it was also said that I was going around taking people hostage. Now, I can't say anything about that, but on the court report, whatever the hell you want to call it, the tribunal report, it said I was misbehaving in the, bus in the building, which was an account of what was said at the, at the tribunal. For it to be said that I was misbehaving in the building on written evidence from the tribunal, and for it to be said there and then that day, meant that that information about me misbehaving in the building was communicated from here. They didn't get it from Mars. So you, you, you were telling them that I was misbehaving in the building and that it affected my losing my liberty. So for you to say no is a lie because it's written on a court report, what have you got to say to that? Ronan, I have put it in black and white in this uh, letter to you that we have not submitted any oral or written information about you to the tribunal. We haven't. We've okay, okay, I won't take your word for it. What I'll do is I'll look at the tribunal report, yes, and on the tribunal report it mentions I was misbehaving in the building, and on the Dr. Jolly, um, whatever you want to, have you heard that name like that, Dr. Jolly? On the Dr. Jolly, the senior consultant at Charing Cross Hospital, on the actual uh, response to my complaint, he's actually said in that that I was misbehaving in the building, etc. Now, information about me in the building was given. They didn't, they didn't, they didn't, they, they had to ask you for you to give them that information. The information was given, there's no question, because it's written in the actual court report. And I was there at the time, and I remember it being said, if you have a problem with that, take it up with the magistrate and take it up with the senior consultant. That, and that's contradictory to what you're saying. Take it up with the magistrate, but it happens to be true. I'm sorry, you're in, I'm sorry if you're saying otherwise, but it's written down in the court report. I can say what you want, I'm just going to read this out. Yeah. Well, I have put it in uh, in writing for you, Ron. And no, it, it is written, Anna. Anna, Anna it is it, okay, 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 okay. I'm, I'm, not, I, I'm, I'm sure, I'm sure in your mind, yeah. okay. If, if, the, if the court paper, the tribunal paper, if it says that, look, I had provided this information, you show me. And, uh, you know. I could do it right now. It. I could do it right now. Yeah, because... I don't think there will be any tribunal documentation. Okay, that's that that's enough. That's enough. That's enough. That's enough. You're yes, you're you're going John from the specific to the general to to dilute things. So here goes. Um, when asked how you would like the above issue to be resolved, you stated you'd no faith in the management team and you'd like to be given priority to move out into independent accommodation within a month. And let's see what it says here. Okay, engage. 
Oh, yeah, here we are again. It says that um, you are sad about how I felt, but in order to resolve it, you'd be more than happy for me to meet with me again and for me to engage with you supporting me. In other words, that's you knocking on my door trying to push more care plans on me. That, I, I, I was <coughs> first came into the building, you forcefully dispensed medication to me, and you said you don't dispense medication. There's cups out there proof that you do dispense medication. Even when I was allowed to self-medicate, you took my repeat prescription and you still went to the chemist. The thing being that you received the medication every day in the office and you bully me into having to be there and take it with you. And somehow this is part of some support plan or somehow by you forcing me to take the medication that you're given to me, you're caring for me and therefore you've involved yourself in my care and I volunteered for it. I never volunteered for it. And when you were taking that medication from the second chemist while I was medicating from the first, that medication was dispensed out Outside the law that was a legal dispensing of drugs basically by law that's drug dealing Ronan when you say you are you referring to me as as Yosef there's different types of you there's you plural there's you singular okay. or maybe you singular basically means you you, you plural means you collectively well, you as a group you can one say you obvious, as a group one obviously it's I haven't grammar. normally I don't deal directly myself with the medication but mm. The most important is you have the right to take or not to take medication because, uh, you know, nobody is forced to take medication. Even if you speak to your care coordinator or the doctors, you know. Yeah, that's, 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 that's in theory. If that's so the case, why are you forcing me to take it? Each, to each, take well, it's, 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 on, it's on camera. People, people are in the hallway and um, you, you make us take it and if you don't you report us and people are in fear of losing their liberty. And by having us on camera taking the medication, I moved in here. I was moved in as a stabbing victim. There's a scar. And basically um, I was treated as dangerous and when I came in here I was treated as very dangerous. I subsequently got re-diagnosed with having Asperger's. Now since I was moved in as a vulnerable adult by the police because I was in danger, to be moved into a similar place of a similar standard and not lose out on the legal status of my tenancy compared to what I was had before. I previously lived with a secure tenancy in an unfurnished flat for 15 years. Now... When I came in here, I was sought out of a secure tenancy. I got some type of short hold tenancy that wasn't what I was promised. I was supposed to be moved on quickly to secure a tenancy. And I, wasn't, I was supposed to be vulnerable and not be anywhere unsafe. I stopped someone coming into the building. She said she was with a company called Circle, C-I-R-C-L-E. And they're a type of management group that monitor ankle tags. Also, the person next door shouted that he was in prison for six months. I was a vulnerable adult with no uh, history of violence, with no criminal record. Vulnerable, moved into a place of safety, but moved into a place of equal terms of what my tenancy was before. Under the police path move. Now, when I came in here, it's not a place of safety because the people here, the client group, they were on ankle tags and they got prison records. They're dan- I was t- told that nobody here was dangerous by John. The fact that people have ankle tags and they're monitored by Circle, well, they're not, they're not, they don't wear the ankle tags, the decoration. I am amongst, I'm in a place that I was supposed to be put into for safety and it is clear and obvious that it's not a place of safety and that's not paranoia. What are you going to say to that? I think you were aware that this place was supported housing. This, you know, you wanted similar tenancy the way you were there in general needs. This is not general needs. Okay, what I was aware of and what I thought when I came in here, that's my mind and he's not a mind reader. I'm afraid to... Uh, and and I, I, don't, I don't know, he's talking around in circles and then he's saying something is written so it must be true and he, what must be true is written is a lie, he's written that he knows to be untrue and I, 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 I can't understand this man. But th- I thank you very much for the mediation meeting. Oh yes, you have to say what this is. Could you say that this is a mediation meeting or it's a, it's a, it's a meeting that is a criticism of the response you gave to my complaint. Yeah, well, thank you for coming hold for it, this. Hold it, hold it. Want me to hold Okay, this is a mediation meeting that uh, was uh, arranged uh, between Ronan, myself, 
and uh, there are three people present here. And yeah, and my name is Yosef Haptu, and I'm the area manager for Look Out for Mental Health Services. And I'm happy to have this meeting with Ronan and to the, address what is, what is, uh, any issues that we have. Yeah. What is the meeting? What is the meeting addressing? Yeah. Well, the meeting is addressing some of the concerns, issues that you have uh, in my reply to the complaints you had. And uh, you have a copy of the, of the letter with yourself. Oh, yeah, that thing there. Okay, I don't want to hear about that. It's something you feel important or something. I want no, to copy this. Okay, um, this is into the... This meeting is for the look-ahead complaint that I made uh, basically, I, I don't know, there's no, get a, get a reference number on it or something. There's a page missing oh, here. Yeah. This is, yeah, yeah, this is, a, this is in relation to complaints made by Ronan in January and, um, and this is the outcome of the complaints investigation uh, made in um, in February, and a response was sent to Ronan uh, on 28th of February. Okay, all right then. Yeah. Okay. Now that we've had the complaint, the complaint was made. The report was given by Yosef. I've come here for the uh, dialogue into how I was happy and unhappy with it. The next stage, the final stage, is that I get a final response. Now, this means due to the self-regulatory setup that Luca has had, I, I, when that happens, they've gone through the whole process and the self-regulatory process would be exhausted. So Luca Head will have done what they can and I'll have done what I can and I eagerly await the final response. May I ask you, Joseph, when you're going to do a response to the concerns I've raised here? If you want to, if you, are you, when are you going to put it in writing? I think, yeah, I think we're going in circle uh, here, uh, Ronan. Yeah? Okay, all right. Now, this is a response to exactly, you know, the concerns you raised, and it's ad it's it's addressed here. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Nice. Now, I think what's important, Ronan, is come on. This is how we move forward. Okay, okay, I understand. How we move forward, you know, we seriously take your concern about uh, your housing, you want to move on. Come on, let's focus on that and how we take that forward, yeah? And okay. London Syrians are here. Yeah? Okay, okay. They will be taking over from 1st of June. Okay, I understand that. Yeah? Since London... How they can support you with your housing from the 1st of June, yeah? Okay, I understand, yeah. I understand. Okay. okay, so Joseph, I'd like to ask you, the final response is simply a written document as to what I've said to you here, from what you can remember, how you've looked at what I've said about me, for example, um, saying that there isn't a, a care plan agreement and you'd no right to put it on me and that you're to move me on without any, st move me on according to the original path application. Let me, let the story tear. What this basically means is as follows. When you move me on in a few weeks, you reopen the original path application with no strings attached to care plans. Where I was to be moved on under police emergency. I'd like that path application reopened. I'd like you to address that in your final response. I cannot promise you something I won't deliver. Okay, okay what's happening here is where... Yeah, I, okay. I won't say something that I won't be able to deliver, yeah? And I won't say that I will be moving you in a few weeks' time, yeah? That, that does not depend on me. We don't have general needs where we can move you to, yeah? It all depends on the council. Yeah. Okay. So okay. 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 Uh, okay. I understand. Okay. I, I, I can understand. I'm not demanding, but it would be desirable if the move on I had was a path application that expired. Now, for it ex to expire, it expired because nobody made any movement on it. For it to expire, it expired unfairly. In the name of fairness, um, I think it only right that it should be reopened. I, I, what I really want is for you just to say to me that you're going to do a final response, you're going to write up a letter on this meeting and give it to me. Okay. Now, okay. 
Now, there is very little time in terms of what me as Look Ahead we can do for you. Now, the most important thing is how we work with the London Cyrenians, how, how they will be supporting you with your housing. They're here, yeah, and they can see what your concern, okay, what so your priority is. Not to do with the complaint. All I want no, 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 no. No, no, All it, I want you to do is end this meeting by saying you're going to send a written response to this meeting. That's all I well, want. I'm happy just to write to acknowledge that we met and we addressed, reviewed, revisited the issues that you raised previously. I'm happy so to do that. Just promise me you'd send me something in writing in the next day or two, I'm happy. Yeah, that's fine. Well, I'm, you okay. know, I can okay, do that. Fine, that's fine, thank you very much. The, the self-regulatory system, when I get that written response, will have, will have exhausted.